Welcome back to ASTR, the video magazine that brings together the Seventh-day Adventist Church's past and present in order to inspire for the future. In this episode, the managing editor of the online Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists, Dr. Dragoslava Santrak, joins me as we tell another inspiring story from the ESDA. Then Ashley Chisholm, our research center manager, tells us about a unique collection of papers in the General Conference archives. Margarita Neira, the editor of the Seventh-day Adventist Yearbook, ends this episode by sharing about the hundreds of periodicals published by the Seventh-day Adventist Church worldwide. But first, let's turn to this week in Adventist history. Welcome to This Week in Adventist History. On October 18, 2022, Bert Holoviak passed away at the age of 84. Born in Newburgh, New York in 1937, Holoviak attended Atlantic Union College on a music scholarship, studying music and history. But he left the college in his senior year to take up a job assisting in outreach at the Adventist Evangelistic Center in Times Square, New York City. There Bert met and, in June 1963, married Mary Bidwell, who was in August for the Faith for Today television program. Meanwhile, Bert had been drafted into the U.S. Army. He served in the Medical Corps, including volunteering to serve as part of Operation White Coat. After this military service ended, he took a job as a linotype operator with the Washington Post newspaper. He and Mary had two children, Kendra and Brent. Bert completed his BA degree at Columbia Union College, graduating as a history major in 1968, and he continued his studies, completing a Master's in American Studies at the University of Maryland. He first joined the General Conference archives as assistant archivist in 1975. Bert would go on to work there for 35 years. Working under Don Yost, the first director of the Office of Archives and Statistics, Bert helped to found the General Conference Archives. He was in charge of the archives section of the department, and he and Don set up all the systems and processes that are still the foundation of our work in the archives and they put the GC archives on a firm and professional footing. We who currently work in ASTR will always be grateful to Bert Holoviak for his pioneering work. While working in the archives, he went on to write highly significant papers on Adventist history. These included studies of church pioneer and eventual dissident Alonzo T. Jones and his theology of righteousness by faith, and of the landmark 1919 Bible Conference. These were just the most influential of a series of important papers Burt wrote, based largely on the holdings of the GC archives. In 1982, Burt had become Assistant Director of Archives and Statistics. From 1988, he was an adjunct professor at Columbia Union College, later renamed Washington Adventist University. In 1998, Burt was appointed Director of the Office of Archives and Statistics, a position he held for 12 years until retiring at the end of 2010. Burt was always very helpful to researchers wanting to do work in the GC archives. He was especially helpful to graduate students doing their dissertations on Adventist history, who he and Mary often welcomed into their own home for Friday night dinners and Sabbath lunches. Furthermore, Bert was a digital pioneer. He was responsible for taking the Office of Archives and Statistics online, creating four websites, AdventistArchives.org, AdventistYearbook.org, AdventistDirectory.org, and AdventistStatistics.org. Under his leadership, the yearbook became available as an online, fully searchable database while continuing to be printed. 
His team also created an online archive of 1.5 million pages of digitized historic Adventist content, all fully searchable by word or phrase. This has been hugely beneficial to Adventist scholars and family tree researchers around the world. And this database will continue to have a lasting impact as long as anyone researches the Adventist past. Although Bertoloviak passed away a year ago this week, truly his works follow him. That was this week in Adventist history. Today's story from the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists, which can be freely accessed at encyclopedia.adventist.org, is about Diran Chirakian, a Seventh-day Adventist minister and modern-day Paul in Turkey's Ottoman Empire. Following in the steps of Adventist pioneers Theodore Antony and Zadur Baharian, Chirakian became known as the New Apostle to the interior of Asia Minor, where, in the end, he sacrificed his life for the Adventist cause. In the annals of history, the 20th century is the century of martyrs. In it, more Christians were killed for their faith than in any previous century. In Turkey, for instance, Christian Armenians and Assyrians endured terrible persecution. Between 1894 and 1923, around 1.5 million people of these ethnic groups perished in a national genocide that Elie Wiesel has called a Holocaust before the Holocaust. The annihilation of Armenian Adventist congregations is one of the saddest chapters in Adventist history. In 1914, scattered all over Turkey were about 350 Adventist church members, most of them ethnic Armenians. Of those, more than 250, including about 50 children and youth, lost their lives in the following years. Among the better known martyrs was Diran Charakian. Diran Chirakian was born in Constantinople in 1875. He was a famous Armenian poet and college teacher who became a fervent Adventist believer in 1914 through the influence of several individuals, beginning with a French Adventist missionary, Dr. Aimé Jacques Giroux. Next, a fellow professor, Mr. Bezergian, left to work in Egypt, where he became associated with George Keogh, an Adventist missionary there. From Keogh, Bezergian learned about Seventh-day Adventists and became particularly interested in the books of Ellen G. White. Bezergian sent many of his books to Chirakian. One day in August 1914, an Adventist coal porter, Nikolos Tefronides, knocked on the door of Chirakian's home and presented him with some books. Recognizing them as the same ones Bezergian had previously sent him, Chirakian informed the coal porter that he was in possession of all of them. The coal porter replied, If you have all these books, I am surprised that you still smoke cigars. Embarrassed, Chirakian put out the cigar he was smoking, realizing from that moment that the habit was offensive to God. Tephronides invited him to attend Bible meetings in a hall nearby. That Sabbath, the 39-year-old professor entered the small Seventh-day Adventist meeting room in the capital of Turkey. That morning, the Swiss missionary Emil Frauschiger preached in English while the teenager named Diamondola Keanides translated. Charakian felt amazed to see members of different ethnic groups with long histories of conflict between them worshipping together. But what impressed him most was the beauty of the truth presented that morning. Chirakian continued week after week to attend the Sabbath school and church services, as well as prayer meetings. 
Later in the year, Pastor Zadur Baharian, the senior national pastor in Turkey, held evangelistic meetings and Professor Chirakian brought many of his friends to hear the truths that he had accepted and learned to love. Soon after Chirakian publicly professed his Adventist faith, his wife left him. His friends and fellow professors at the university shunned him, and even his trusted friend Aram Ashad no longer spoke to him. Charakian lost his tenured position at the university and, as World War I expanded, was enlisted into the Turkish military. He shared his newfound faith with his fellow soldiers, and his desire to keep the Sabbath and refusal to bear arms soon put him at odds with his superiors. Payment of a tax at last exempted him from military service, and once out of the army, he finally had the opportunity to be baptized by Pastor Frau Schiger. The Levant Union Mission offered Chirakian employment as a minister, and he poured himself into his labor for souls, spending entire nights in prayer. A powerful preacher, his ministry drew many to the church. One fruit of his efforts was the conversion of his friend, Aram Ashod. In this photo that you see here, from left to right, are the church workers Elder Grun, Diamondola Ashod, Nikolos Tefronides, and Aram Ashod. Chirakian participated in the church's evangelistic efforts when the first tent was pitched in Turkey with government permission in 1914. In this photo of the tent, we see from left to right Emil Frauschiger, Diran Chirakian, Madame Giroux, and Monsieur Giroux with their children. On August 1, 1916, Chirakian was arrested and imprisoned, accused of plotting against the government by spreading subversive teachings. He took the opportunity to witness for his faith to the many men jailed with him. Freed after a month, thanks to influential friends, he begged the guards to allow him to finish preaching before departing. Drafted into the army once more, Chirakian again experienced severe trials and boldly testified of his faith before the highest military tribunals. At war's end in November 1918, he encouraged Turkish Adventists to stand strong, and he worked to establish new groups of believers. He received his ministerial license from the Levant Union Mission. There is no record of him ever being ordained, but his work was as dedicated and sacrificial as any ordained minister. Charakian visited the scattered believers to encourage them and reorganize the groups and churches where possible. Many members had lost their lives in the war and others had been deported while a good number had left the country. Refugees from the interior streamed to Constantinople for food and shelter. In this photo, Chirakian, second from the left, is photographed with church workers Tephronides, a missionary Mr. Briddle, Emil Frauschiger, and Diamondola Kianides. In the next photo, Chirakian is with a group of Adventists in Constantinople, Chirakian had taken over the pastoral care of the small Armenian flock in Konya until he was arrested in 1921 and convicted because he refused to renounce his faith in court. Two brothers from the local Adventist group were convicted with him and they were shot dead within a few days of the trial. Chirakian's ordeal began on April 14, 1921. For several months, he was forced to walk in chains beaten and tortured by mounted militiamen, traversing the barren mountainous area of Anatolia. Gradually, all his belongings were taken from him. But with a small Bible in his hands, he preached to his fellow prisoners while walking. After having traveled about 620 miles, the convict colony reached the Kurdish city of Diyarbakir on the banks of the river Tigris. They now faced the deadly Syrian desert 
beyond the river. Along the way, women and children from Armenian villages, taking pity on the prisoners, gave them food. Any prisoner who could not walk farther was left behind to die. Charakian was struck by fever, and finally he could not walk any longer. Having listened to his short sermons on the march and despite themselves being in deepest misery and total exhaustion, his fellow prisoners did not want to leave the preacher behind. They carried him on their backs until strength fled from them too. Yet they did not give up and convinced some officers in exchange for Charakian's coat to lift him onto a horse and tie him to the saddle. A few hours later, Charakian died on the bank of the Tigris River at Diyarbakir on July 8, 1921. We are relatively well informed about the martyrdom of Charakian because he was already famous during his lifetime and the entire Armenian people mourned his death. A non-Adventist paper had this to say of him. During the whole journey, Duran Chakarian was inspired by the words of God. He was against any spirit of revenge. He showed forgiveness to his persecutors. His faith was never shaken, and he never let the Bible leave his hand. Chirakian also left behind written notes during the march that found their way back to Adventist members in Constantinople, where the mission office was located, and in addition, there were some eyewitnesses who reported his death in oral and written form later on. Even the Armenian Soviet Encyclopedia honored Chirakian with an entry that acknowledged his literary accomplishments for the Armenian nation. We read in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7, Consider the outcome of their way of life and follow their faith. The power of Diran Charakian and the other Adventist martyrs lies in the fact that they illustrate in a dramatic way what it means to glorify God and be true to His commandments in a world ruled by dark forces. In spite of obstacles and doubts, they remained faithful unto death. The strength to bear their sufferings was their hope in Jesus, the soon returning King. We invite you to read more about Diran Charakian and other Adventist martyrs in the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists at encyclopedia.adventist.org. That's encyclopedia.adventist.org. Sometimes our collections are about more relatively recent events. In August 2019, the Reebok Memorial Library received a donation of materials from Dr. Dean Jennings. The new Dean Jennings collection contains mostly correspondence related to the work of Dr. Desmond Ford. Letters and materials sent between Dr. Jennings and Desmond and Gillian Ford, letters between the Fords and others, and between each other, can all be found in this collection. The entirety of the correspondence all pertains to the theological debate and administrative issues around the content and promulgation of Dr. Ford's research between 1977 and 1980, with the bulk of the collection dated to just after the Sanctuary Review Conference held at Glacier View Ranch in 1980. Correspondence in this collection include, but are not limited, to historical figures such as Ray Cottrell, Richard Hamill, Robert Parr, Edward Heppenstall, and W. E. Reed. Visit the Encyclopedia of Seventh-day Adventists to read more about the Sanctuary Review Conference, commonly referred to by Seventh-day Adventists as simply Glacier View. Just go to encyclopedia.adventist.org and search for Glacier View. The article in the conference should be the top result. The Jennings Collection has not yet been digitized, but you can peruse the finding aid for the collection at the link you can see on your screen. You can also point your camera at this QR code. It will take you straight to the finding aid. If you know of other records on any topic similar to the letters in the Jennings Collection, which you believe should be preserved as part of our Adventist heritage and history, please contact us at archives at gc.adventist.org so that we can help you find a home for those materials. 
Preserving historical materials in a long-term repository, such as the Reebok Memorial Library or the General Conference Archives, can help us all create good history, which is one of the things that the Office of Archives, Statistics, and Research is all about. Welcome to a new segment from the ASTR Data Collection and Publication Team. For this episode, we will briefly touch on the number of periodicals reported by the World Divisions and the languages in which they are published as included in the 2023 Adventist Yearbook. Listed in the 2023 Yearbook are 588 periodicals. Some are published weekly and others monthly, bimonthly, quarterly, or annually. And they are divided into four major categories. First, general periodicals. There are 479. Second, division periodicals. There are 12 published by a specific division targeting their constituency. Third, union periodicals. 36 of them published by a specific union targeting members within their territory. The first three categories are published in print and some also have an electronic version. And the fourth category is electronic-only periodicals and newsletters, 61 of them, which, as the name indicates, are only published digitally. The reported 588 periodicals are published in one of 86 languages, of which the languages most utilized are with 10 or more periodicals published in these languages in descending number. English, Spanish, Russian, French, Portuguese, Africans, Ukrainian, German, and Norwegian. Periodicals published by the Seventh-day Adventist Church maintain the world members informed of the news, plans, projects, and events of the Church, whether locally or globally. However, the main goal of publishing periodicals is to share the love of God to all the world following the Great Commission, as registered in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. So you must go to people in every country of the world, teach them how to become disciples, baptize them by the authority of God the Father, His Son, and the Holy Spirit. To explore and find more information on the Adventist Yearbook, visit www.adventistyearbook.org. That's adventistyearbook.org. Thank you so much for watching the latest episode of ASTR. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe on YouTube and tell your friends about it. And consider following us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Join us again next time as we share more information and inspiration from Adventist history and today.